weather. Um, this is a, a little smaller for Monongahela. My, my last branch, Mount Laurel, this is actually a pretty good, pretty good sized group. So uh, you never want to take uh, for granted the, the blessings of the Lord. You know, we um, started things off in Sunday school today talking about the, the love of God. Um, of course, represented by Jesus Christ and, and thinking upon that and, and how we might reflect that in our lives. So uh, I think our hope and prayer today is that we would come together, that we would hear the, the word of God preached, that we'd be strengthened in our faith, that we'd be able to go out and, and shine that light to a greater degree. I have some prayer requests to mention before we uh, open in prayer. The first one uh, being the Kurowski family. They've been dealing with uh, COVID. I think they're just getting over that now, so please remember them in prayer. Um, COVID has also been going through the Stroni family. Um, I think almost all of them have had it at this point, so please remember them in prayer. Hopefully we'll see them back soon. And then it was mentioned in Sunday school, Brad Kurowski's father-in-law had a heart attack. Uh, he's doing a little bit better at the moment, but we want to continue to remember him in prayer. And Sister Terry is not with us this morning. She's not feeling well as, as, uh, as well. And then I think it was mentioned on Wednesday, but Ron and Tida Harvey were asking in prayer for them. They've been very important contacts for us in the church and working with the Native Americans. And uh, they and, and several of their uh, children have COVID. It's hit them pretty hard. Are there any other prayer requests that need to be made this morning? Okay. Well, then we are going to open in prayer. We're going to have uh, Brother Brian address us this morning, so have a prayer in your heart for him. And we're also going to have Children's Church, so we'll dismiss um, after opening prayer. But let's all stand. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you this day, O Lord, gathered together in your house, which has the name of Christ. And Lord, we ask that you would come and even abide with us, O oh Lord, during this time. That as we look unto you, O oh Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds, Heavenly Father. That you would strengthen us, O oh Lord. That you would look down upon each need this day, O oh Lord. And that you would provide what we need, O oh Lord. Whether it be strength or encouragement or support, Heavenly Father, I pray, Almighty God, that each individual gathered here today would feel your touch. We also ask, O oh Lord, that you be with the sick and afflicted, those that were mentioned um, even just now, O oh Lord, and those that have been on our prayer list, Heavenly Father. We pray that you be merciful unto them, that they would feel your peace and your presence in their lives, O oh Lord, that you would strengthen and uplift them, O oh Lord, that you'd even be with the, the caretakers and the families, O oh Lord, that are uh, struggling, O oh Lord, with sickness and affliction. So again, Heavenly Father, we give thanks unto you for all that you've given to us, O oh Lord. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that what we do today would honor and glorify you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's turn to number 42 in the White Book. Thank you. 
Good morning. Uh, as uh, I think anybody who opens or, or speaks um, usually asks me to have a, a prayer for them, I'm going to ask for double. Um, we were downstairs. You know, it's not often that teachers get called into the uh, excuse me into the meeting with the elders, and um, I, you know, I, they asked if, if I had something. I, I said I, I've had a thought on my mind, but I, I, I've never opened. I, I don't know if I can do that. And I, I thought where we left it was Brother John was going to open, but when I when I got up here, Brother Brandon leaned over and said, "Can you can you start us off today? What, you know, we want you to start us off. So have a prayer in your heart uh, for me at this time." Um, I, uh, I'm thankful to be here today. I'm thankful for uh, for the week uh, that, we, that we've had. Um, uh, I, I always enjoy uh, I always enjoy Thanksgiving week for uh, a, a lot of reasons. Um, I mean, number one, we talked about it for those that were on Wednesdays. Um, it's always good to be thankful. Uh, it's something we should have in our hearts, you know, all, all day, every day, especially as, as the saints of God. But uh, th this is that week that we put a little bit extra attention on it. And I, I always enjoy our Wednesday nights before Thanksgiving as well, just because there, there seems to be just a, like I said, that, you know, a deeper, a deeper interest or deeper focus on that gratitude or that thankfulness that we, that we carry with us each and every day. Um, and I thank God for that. We had a, we had a good, good Wednesday. Um, I'm just, I'm thankful for that. And, uh, you know, one of the things about um, Thanksgiving is, you know, I, I get older and, um, you know, my wife's probably going to laugh at me. Uh, and the, the song that you heard this morning, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. That's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be talking about choices. But as I've gotten older um, and my uh, my metabolism has has slowed down or I think slowed down is the right phrase. I'm looking at Sister Luann. Um, you know, but back in the day, I used to just eat, especially Thanksgiving. I loved it because I, I love the food. Um, and my family all, all knows mashed potatoes have been my favorite food since I was, I think, a little kid. Uh, I've always said that. Uh, and I used to try to, you know, see if I could eat two or three pounds of potatoes just myself. But as I've gotten older and my metabolism has slowed down, uh, I, I've noticed I have to make choices when it comes to Thanksgiving dinner. Um, I, I can't eat as much as I used to. So I, I can't indulge myself like I used to. Uh, and especially when it, you know, af after, after first, uh, Brother Brandon, uh, we were over at his house on, on Thursday and we are sitting there for, I don't know what, 20 minutes, no one was eating any more food. You started to clear the table. And I said, I'm, I'm still deciding if I want, if I want to eat more. I'm still deciding if there's enough room in my stomach. Uh, and, and I did, and it was a wrong choice. And then we got to the, to the uh, dessert table, and I'm looking at Sister Luann, because she made one of my favorite desserts, uh, the, the Buckeye brownie she makes, and there's another decision point. All right, there's a whole table of desserts. I know I can't eat all of them like I used to. I need to make a choice of which ones that are worth eating to me, knowing that I'm going to feel sick later, and trying to mitigate those, those consequences of my choices. And um, I'll tell you, this, this year I, I didn't do a great job of it. I, I think I fell asleep on the couch while everyone else was trying to play a game. And uh, I wasn't, wasn't much fun the, the rest of the night because of, of maybe some of the choices I made earlier in the night. But um, I, I talked about this, I believe, I believe it was when we were ordained teachers, um, Brother Dan and I. But my mind, when I think of choices, um, I, I remember the, uh, the last event uh, that I was a part of pre-COVID uh, pre was... And I know I've talked about this, the, the youth mini camp. Um, the GMBA felt inspired to bring a bunch of young people into the middle of the woods in uh, rustic might be a, a, a kind word for, for the environment we were in, Brother, Brother Brandon uh, and Sister Juliet were there as well. Um, but uh, it was a blessing. It was a blessing. It was, you know, for me personally, it was something I, I took with me throughout the pandemic. It almost felt like for me that was, that was meant to be the last thing I was a part of. And the theme of that weekend was... Uh, I believe it was up close and immovable. And I was part of a seminar that weekend where we talked about um, being closer to God, how to get closer to God. And, um, and brother, brother Cameron Staley and myself led that discussion. And uh, we, we, talked about, we talked about choices a little bit. And one of the facts I shared, um, it's, it's interesting. I shared the fact then, and I just looked it up last night to get my numbers right. And I, I feel like it's grown. Um, but, but the science says that we make, as humans, 30,000, or now it's 35,000 choices a day. 35,000 decisions a day that we as human beings make. Uh, and that, that, that's stunning to me. I saw a couple of your faces were a little bit like, wow, that, that's a lot of decisions that you make. Um, and the thing about it is, is so many of them are subconscious, right? Um, you know, I, I, again, thinking about Thanksgiving, I, uh, I chose my outfit, what I was going to wear purposefully, knowing that I wanted pants that stretched a little bit, uh, knowing I wanted a shirt that was a little bit light and airy because I, I knew I was going to get overheated from eating so much food. Um, but I know one of the choices I, I, I subconsciously made that morning, uh, or that, yeah, that morning, 
was, uh, you know, think about getting dressed. What, what shoe did you put on first this morning? Do you remember, Sister Norma? You don't know, right? You get dressed every day, you put shoes on, but you don't decide, you don't, you don't remember that decision. At some point in your life, you, you might have, maybe as a kid, you, you decided, I'm gonna put my left shoe on first today, and it becomes part of your subconscious, right? It becomes part of something that you don't even think twice about in, in a given day, um, but it's a decision you have to make. And you think of all those thousands of little micro decisions that we make each and every day. Um, and I know we wanna focus on you know, the bigger decisions in life often, uh, you might focus on, you know, Brother Bob did a great job leading us through kindness this morning in Sunday school for those, those that might not have been there and talked about, you know, choosing kindness every day and every moment, um, how, how easy that is, or it should be for us to do. And, you know, those, those decision points where someone's in front of you and they need something and deciding to help them, uh, that, that might be an easier decision. Those are ones that you can think about, you process, the, you know, the pros and cons, the benefits, the consequences. Uh, same as my, my, my Thanksgiving dinner decisions. There's pros to eating more food. There's going to be consequences in an hour when I, I can't keep my eyes open anymore. I, uh, I don't feel well enough to, to stay awake at night or whatever. But um, it's all about those choices that we make. And when I was, this song has been on my mind for a, about a month, I'd say. And you can, you can tell we hadn't sung it in a while. You can tell, no offense, you hadn't played it in a little while. Um, and it, the, the music was upside down, which tells me we haven't sung it in a while because no one's even realized the mu music was upside down. Um, but it, for some reason, this song has been on my mind. And it's all about making, making Jesus your choice. Um, and I think each and every one of us, and I look around, uh, almost all of us, have made that ultimate choice. Uh, I'll call it that macro decision to making Jesus our choice. When we went down to the waters and we, we gave our life to God and said, you know, I, I promise to serve him for the rest of my life and I repent of my sins. Um, that was that first big choice we might have made in our life. Uh, but another part of that seminar that Cameron, Brother Cameron and I did was talked about getting closer to God. Was it a process or an event? And I think I shared that here as well, but uh, you know, the events in our lives like baptism or um, you know, choosing to, to fill a, an office, um, you know, teaching a Sunday school class, uh, you know, those, are, those are events in our life that might define how close we are to God. Um, but we know it's those day-to-day -day decisions, that process that really makes you closer. If all you care about are those big decisions, if all you focus on are those moments that, um, they, I'll say it, they feel a little bit more black and white, um, you might get closer a little bit, but in between those, you can, go, you can go years without decisions that monumental for yourself sometimes. And it's those little decisions that allow you to get closer to God um, seemingly every day. And I, I want to I talk a little bit more about that and a little bit more about making Jesus your choice. You know, for, for those, and I'll just say it, uh, we should extend this every Sunday. For those that haven't gone to the waters and made Jesus your choice, that haven't made that macro decision, um, I can tell you it's the best choice I've ever made. It might be the only choice that I don't regret. Uh, there were no consequences I was worried about making that choice. I knew I wasn't going to be sick later like Thanksgiving dinner. I knew I wasn't going to be regretting, what, uh, regretting it like if I wore the wrong outfit. Um, but I, 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 know that, uh, I, I know that some struggle with that decision. Um, and I think just being here means you, you chose Jesus to a degree. But you know, we should always extend that, that, uh, that offer. That, um, you know, extend that, that invitation uh, to accept Jesus and make that choice. But um, it's those subconscious decisions that I, I want to talk a little bit more about today. And, you know, the world that we're living in, and then I'll, I'll share a couple verses and then I'll, I'll give way to my brothers. I, I was joking with Brother Brandon. I said, I, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to be short. Uh, typically, for the last what, year and a half, it, it hadn't mattered because we could just move right into communion and testimony. But I feel like there's pressure with the, a two-meeting service to, uh, to fill, fill some time. Um, but I'm not going to talk super long. Um, but I'm going I'm to share, share one verse. And, you know, what my mind was thinking about decisions... And, you know, we hear a lot from the rostrum lately. Um, we think about the world that we're in, and you think about the environment that we're in. Um, and I, I don't mean physically, I mean more, probably more socially than anything, or maybe even politically. And I, I, I don't talk about that. I don't, I don't get into that. I don't like when it gets brought up in the rostrum to get into those decisions. But we know that the world we're in, there doesn't seem to be any middle ground with people anymore. It's either you're for me or you're against me. It's either that you agree with my decision or you're my enemy. And it feels like people are so quick to make those decisions in life that 
If you don't fall in line with whatever their belief is, you're automatically written off. You're automatically put down. You're automatically someone that they want to hurt, that they want to harm, that they want uh, to, to talk bad about or, or you know, to, um, to find something on you to, to, raise, you know, to, to li- bring you down even further. And that's tough. Um, I mean, when we think about the decisions that go on in this, in this world, in this country, in your daily lives, whatever it is, uh, they're not all as black as, and white for us as I, I choose to serve Jesus Christ. Um, sometimes we are in the middle. Sometimes we see both sides. But society doesn't want that anymore. Um, and and I, I feel like from a social standpoint, from a societal standpoint, uh, I, don't, I don't feel like that's a benefit for us. Um, I feel like that causes too much divide. I, I feel like it causes too much, um, too much hatred, to be, to be frank with you. But I know there's a verse in the Bible where Jesus says that, uh, that exact thing. And I'll, I'll read that for you really, really quickly. Um, if you give me one minute here. And this is when uh, Jesus is, uh, is uh, casting out an, an evil spirit. So we read this in the, I think we were studying the miracles. And um, the, uh, the Pharisees question it and say he's, uh, he's, he's casting it out by, by work of the devil. Uh, Bezelbub or Bezelbub or however you, want, however you say it. Uh, that, that's who's giving him the power to cast this out. And you know, Jesus goes into, um, this is in Matthew 12 if anybody's following along. He goes into talking about a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. You know, if, I, if I was doing this by power of Satan, how would I cast out evil spirits? That, that, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and he, he's going off on them to that. And he talks about um, in, in verse 29, or how, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. He's, he's, he's laying out in front of them, explaining to them why uh, they shouldn't believe um, that he's casting out evil spirits for, from evil. Um, he said that you, know, if you have to bind that spirit. You have, to, you have to overcome that. Overcome that strong man. Be stronger than him and bind him before you can cast him out. And then he gives the one line um, in, verse, in verse 30. Uh, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. And so Jesus lays what I just said I see as a negative thing about society in a positive light. And what he's saying here is that for those people, and you know, he's talking about spirits here, um, maybe not necessarily people, but ideas, thoughts, uh, whatever spirit we carry. If they're not with me, if they're not doing things in my name, if they're not um, doing things out of love and out of kindness, like we talked about this morning, they're, they're against me. And he's, being, he's making it very black and white. You're either with me or you're against me. You're either making Jesus your choice or you're choosing evil. Now, we think of choosing evil as committing sin, doing something wrong, you know, stealing, murdering, those big, big sins we think of. And I think it even talks about that um, at some point in, the, in these verses. But what he's saying here is, even if you don't decide, even if you're not committing these, what we'll call big sins, even though all sins are created equal, um, if you think you're just making, you know, a, a middle of the road choice, you're, you're, you're against me. You're not on my side at that point. We talk about being, uh, being lukewarm. We'd rather you be hot or cold. It's the same, same vein in, the, in, this, in this scripture here. And he's telling them, telling them this. If you're, not, um, if you're not sowing, if you're not gathering with me, you're scattering abroad. If you're not doing things that are in, my, uh, in the benefit of my kingdom, um, you are, you are, you're against me. You're, uh, you're, uh, you're detriment. You know, we, we studied Paul and Alma's conversion. We talked about what they were doing. Um, and, you know, so often it's, it's easy to think of it like that, right? Uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, wreaking havoc in the church. I'm not sowing uh, discontent among the, the members. I'm not uh, blaspheming. I'm not, um, I'm not going around denying Christ or denying the Holy Ghost, uh, or, or, which is what he gets into next in the scripture. I'm not doing those things. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not doing anything detrimental. Um, but it doesn't take being, being an Alma pre-conversion or a Paul pre-conversion um, to be against Jesus Christ. And I, I think that's where our focus needs to be is on those, on those little decisions, um, those things we can make in our mind every day. You know, I, I remember, uh, and I don't know if Sister Jen, you remember, when we were in, uh, we were in McKees Rocks maybe two or three years ago, and Brother Tony Ritchie, and I think we all know Tony, can get, get, get pretty fired up in a sermon. Um, he was giving a sermon on uh, doing things in the name of Jesus Christ. 
He was talking about every decision we make every day, everything we do. Can you say, I did that in the name of Jesus Christ? And it's so easy to do it when it's, like I said, something big. But he said, can you say, I had that conversation with that person at work in the name of Jesus Christ? I went to the grocery store this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I held the door for somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. I judged this person in the name of Jesus Christ. That, 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 that's where you start to lose yourself, right? And it's easy to say, you know, those, those inconsequential decisions, you know, I, don't, I don't want to attach Jesus' name to all of that. But if you have that mindset of everything you do, every decision you make, whether big, whether it's event, or whether small, it's part of your process, if you can't say that you made those decisions in the name of Jesus Christ, if you can't stand behind that and said, I'm doing this for him, then you're doing it against him. Then you're doing a disservice to, to the love that God's put in each and every one of us when we were called into his gospel. You're doing a disservice to the, the Holy Ghost that was put inside you, um, to the spirit that you're supposed to carry as, as a Christian, as a saint of God, as a member of, of his church, the church of Jesus Christ. And that's, that's, that's all I had to share. And you know, there, was, there was another verse as I, I, was, I was thinking of. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but it's, it's talking about, um, let me get the name right, just so uh, in case you want to look it up later. Uh, uh, Korahor, I think is the name, in, in Alma 30. Uh, and if I pronounce that wrong, I apologize. Um, but he was going around, you know, spreading, spreading false doctrine, saying there is no Christ. You can't prove there is one. You don't know Christ is coming. You don't know that, God's, that God exists. And I feel like that's an argument we hear still today, right? Um, you can't prove that, that that was a miracle. You can't prove that that was divine inspiration. Um, but Alma gives him choices, and if you, if you read this, I won't, I won't get into it. And, uh, I, to, I was going to say go home and read it, but keep attending MBAs because we're, we're getting close to this chapter in our, in our studies. Uh, I don't want to give away any of Brother Dan's lessons here over the next couple months, but um, Alma gives him a choice towards the end of that chapter and, and says, do you believe? One last time, do you, do you believe? And he says, G give me a sign. And um, I'll, I'll leave it to you to read what that sign was, but uh, it kind of forced the decision for him, I think, at that point. And so my, my prayer and my, um, I guess my request to everybody today is, as you go throughout your life, ask yourself that question that Brother Tony asked us that day. Um, can you say that everything you do, you're doing is in the name of Jesus Christ? And let's focus on those choices that we make. And we talk about those subconscious ones. You didn't know what shoe you put on this morning, right? It was just ingrained. We talked about neural pathways with gratitude on Wednesday. Um, focus on those. And, and that, that might not make sense at first, but what I mean is read, study, do the things of the Lord, learn them to where they are subconscious. You shouldn't have to make a conscious decision every day to choose Jesus Christ. You shouldn't have to, when you read this song, to, to, to think about um, making Jesus your choice you shouldn't have to think that way because it should already be ingrained within you. It should, that spirit should live within you. And that's all about strengthening your, you know, your walk with God. It's all about, like we were, we were talking to the young kids, uh, I guess it was over a year and a half now. It's all about making, making those small decisions every day, focusing on that process so that you can become closer to God. Um, that, I know, my, my daughter's not up here, but I think they just watched Frozen 2 again for, I don't know, the 100th time um, a couple weeks ago. And it, it's weird. Every time I see that movie, many, many probably haven't. Um, there's a song in there. It's called Do the Next Right Thing. Uh, and it's, it's someone talking about, you know, where, where they are in their life. They're in a, in a, a tough spot. They got to focus on that next decision, doing that next right thing. Um, sometimes that's all the best we can do. You know, we, the decisions we've made up into our life, you know, I, I didn't do the math, but if you took... 30, 35,000 decisions every day multiplied by uh, days in a week and weeks in a year and years that you've lived. Um, I don't know how many millions or billions of decisions that would be, but every decision you've made has led you to this moment, to where you're at right now. And sometimes all you can focus on is doing that next right thing. Uh, just because you made a poor choice doesn't mean you can't make the right choice next. Just because I chose to put too much mashed potatoes on my plate doesn't mean I can't make the right choice of eating a little bit less dessert to make up for it. Um, and that's where, you know, that's where I think our focus needs to be on, is doing that next right thing, making those choices, and doing all of those choices in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I, I, I'm thankful that I decided to make Jesus my choice um, over 21 years ago. Um, 
And you can see how, how the benefits of that continue to ripple down today. You know, I, we just celebrated our anniversary yesterday. And, you know, I, I wonder within myself, if I wouldn't have made that decision then, would I, have, would I have met my wife? Would my kids be here today? Would I be in this building today if I wouldn't have made that decision on that day? And so I ask you to pray for those that haven't made that decision. Pray for those that are still struggling with that. I'll call it that macro, making Jesus your choice decision. Um, but for yourself, focus on those smaller choices every day. And brother, brother Dan likes to talk, and I know Sister Roma, you've quoted it, I feel like almost every Wednesday, doing that 1% or 2% better every day, right? Make one decision better tomorrow than you did today, and you'll be closer to God. Do another better decision the next day, and you'll be closer to God. Do something to grow your subconscious so that the Spirit, God's Spirit is deeper within you so that you find a close relationship, and you'll make a better decision the next day without even thinking about it. So I, I, I love you each. I love each of you very much. Um, I, I hope uh, I hope uh, that God um, you know, God God gave you a message this morning. I hope I hope it hit home with some of you. Um, I know that uh, I know that choices is something that that is often on my often on my mind. I know I know I make poor ones every day. We're gonna fail. We're only human. You're not gonna make the right decisions each and every day. Thirty five thousand of them, you're bound to make some wrong ones, whether it's inconsequential or whether it's something big. Uh, but focus on trying to make Jesus your choice in each and everything you do. Um, and ask yourself that question. It sounds silly, but ask yourself, am I doing this in the name of Jesus Christ? And if you're focused on that, like Brother Brandon was saying this morning, if you're focused on loving God and doing right by Him, everything else is going to flow from there. Um, whether it's benefits in your life, benefits to others, or ultimately benefits to furthering God's kingdom. It's all going to flow from making those choices. So I love each of you very much. Um, I pray for each of you. Um, and I pray that God continue, God's Spirit continues to be with us as we move throughout, uh, throughout our day. And uh, I'm thankful for today. You know, you know, parent with kids, sometimes two meetings can be tough. Sometimes we can't make them. Um, but feet washing is a, is a special day for us. It's not something we get to do very often. So um, invite God's Spirit into your, into, your, into your hearts this morning, if you haven't already. Uh, and, and let's pray that we ha continue to have a good day. Um, as we go throughout our week, I'll, I'll be praying for you. That any decisions you have, um, that, that God will guide you in those. That, that you'll feel His Spirit in each and every decision you make. And, uh, you know, God, God loves us. He's a merciful, forgiving God. Um, but it's our job to do the best we can, just like we promised at the water, to serve Him to the best of our abilities every day of our life. So, uh, I thank God for, for allowing me to be here, and I'm going to sit down and give way to my brothers. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Enjoyed the words of our brother this morning. <clears throat> and uh, thank you for the, the spirit of God that we feel here in, in his house today. For the message that was uh, provided to us. I too am thankful for the decision I made uh, many years ago uh, to choose Christ. And I, ha I too have never regretted it like our brother shared. Get this tucked in. Well, I'm thankful that our brother was with us this morning and, uh, and that uh, the Lord gave him that message today. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful message about how we ought to, to live our lives. And uh, looking at each moment uh, as, um, you know, in such a way that we might be making choices to please the Lord. And I love that. And as he was speaking, um, I have a couple of verses that came to my mind, but I wanted to, to share with you. Um, and maybe in the past two weeks or so, um, the kids, uh, maybe it was Annabella that started it, she wanted to get a Rubik's Cube. And if you're not familiar with that, it's, it was something that became popular in the 80s. It was a little, it's a little cube with uh, uh, nine different cubes on each side and I think in all there's about 27 little squares on the cube different different colors and apparently it's making a comeback that it's popular among the kids today but it's, it's basically a brain teaser a puzzle and the idea is that it's once all it's all it's all mixed up you try to put it back in order so each side is a different is, is a solid color and I tried this as a kid and, you know, became very frustrated with it myself. 
And I'm sure maybe some of you have tried it over the years, but it's, uh, it seems like a really complicated puzzle. And so Annabella had this, and one of her friends taught her to, to change it a little bit, make a design, and then change it back so it's all solid. And she wanted to show me. So she changed it up and showed me the design, but then she, uh, she mixed it up a little bit, trying to get it back. And all of a sudden, it was no longer perfect anymore. It wasn't uh, solid color on each side, and she got really frustrated. And she said, Dad, you have to fix this. And I was like, this, this is uh, impossible. All right, and this is, you know, only super brilliant, you know, uh, exceptional people are able to solve this puzzle. And, but she was insisting that she didn't want it unless it was fixed. She wasn't going to play with it anymore. She was mad. She wanted to buy a new one. And so, um, you know, I tried for about five minutes, you know, trying to work it out. And you think you're getting somewhere when you fix one side, all one color, just to find out that there's no way that you can get it lined up again uh, if you don't do it the correct way. And so I started to do some research on it. I'm, I'm like, I'm just going to watch a video, find out how to do this. And so as I'm looking into it, my brother talked about how many choices we make each day. You know, as a Rubik's Cube, if you mix it up, can be mixed up over 43 quintillion different ways, which I don't even know how many zeros that is behind it, but it's, uh, it was described like the number of sands in the, in, uh, along the shore of the ocean is how many different ways you could get this cube mixed up. And yet, it is possible to get it back the way, the, you know, solid the way you want it to be. And so uh, here's a video on YouTube, learn how to solve this in 10 minutes. And I thought, okay, let, let's do it. And so I watched this video and I had the cube in my hand and for about the next hour and a half, I was watching this video, rewinding every 10 seconds. How did he do that? What did he? And um, I'm trying to work this out, uh, realizing that one wrong decision that you make when you're trying to solve this cube sets you back. If you have it halfway done and you make the wrong choice, you spin one side of the cube, that now you have to go back 10 steps to get it back to where you had it. And so it was very frustrating, and I continued to watch the video, I continued rewinding. All of a sudden, after about an hour and a half, it's solved. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wow, we, we, we did it. You know, I didn't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to solve this. You just have to have someone who knows how to do it show you, how to show you the way. And, you know, as, as I was listening to my brother speak this morning about all the decisions that we have to make and how we're all striving for the same thing. We're all striving to please God. We're all striving for that, that hope of salvation that we will receive one day. And there's really, there's only one way to get there. Even though we're all, we have all these decisions to make along the way, we all start off in a different place. You know, no matter when you pick up this cube, it's, it's never going to be the same as the last time you picked it up. But even though in our lives, we're all coming from different directions, all a different starting point, that there's a way that if we follow it, we'll all achieve that goal. And Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. And this is the, these are the, this is the, the, the number one decision we have to make. I was looking back in, in 2 Nephi, and he's, he's this, just sharing with uh, the people at this time um, some of the things that he was shown uh, by the Lord and some of the prophecies that were given. And he talks about the Lord coming and being an example for each and every one of us and how the Lord entered the waters of baptism, having no sin of his own, but doing it to fulfill all righteousness and that he might set that example for each of us. And he says that, uh, I'm going to read the 31st chapter of 2 Nephi. He talks about this, this path, this gate by which we can enter. And that gate is repentance and baptism by water. And then cometh the remission of your sins by fire and by the Holy Ghost. And he says, ye are in this straight and narrow path which leads to eternal life. And we've, we've heard about this, this path. We heard about Lehi's dream over the past few weeks and, 
and how it is narrow and straight, that as you go along the path, you have decisions to make to stay on that path, and how important it is to hold on to the, the Word of God, that rod of iron, that we might stay on that path to, to finally get to the end, to, the, to that tree of life that Lehi saw. But he says in the 19th verse, Now, my beloved brethren, after you have gotten into this straight and narrow path, I would ask if all is done. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, for you have not come thus far, save it were by the word of Christ, with unshaken faith in him, relying wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty to save. Wherefore, ye must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. And we heard this morning that lesson that Brother Bob shared with us about being kind and having that love of God. Those, those two great commandments that Christ shared. That we would love God, love all men, press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ, and endure to the end. Behold, this saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. And now... Behold, my beloved brethren, this is the way. That's the way. When you think about all the decisions you have to make in life, some big, some small, the road and the path to eternal life is achieved according to this. This is the way. It doesn't matter how else, uh, or how else you would, you would try to get there? It's not possible. It says, There is none other way, nor name given under heaven, whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God. It's only through Jesus Christ. And as I was working on that cube, you know, I, I, I come to find out it's just little algorithms, they call them, where in certain sequences, once you reach a certain point to solve the first layer, the second layer, it's just a different algorithm. And you turn it, you know, right up, left up, right down, left down. And then you just have to do that same little thing over and over until you get those pieces in order. But <clears throat> I've come to find out it's not only that, you have to be holding it in the right position. So it doesn't matter if you know all the correct algorithms and you just do it. You're kind of just going through the motions. You'll, you won't be able to solve that puzzle unless it's oriented in, in this such a way. And I thought this morning as Sister Lisa was trying to play that song in a piano, you know, when you, when you read a, a music, if you flip it upside down, it still looks like music. And you can read it the same exact way, the same number of lines, the same notes. Uh, you know, there's still this little circles with the flags and everything on it. And you could play this song written upside down if you wanted to, but it's not going to sound anything like the song that we wanted to sing. It has to be oriented in such a way that you can read it and follow it appropriately. And so even though we might, in this life, make decisions, sometimes just go through the motions, we just do it because that's, that's what we're supposed to do. That we always have to be fixed and focused on Jesus Christ, who set the example. Just like our brother said this morning, that we might do it in the name of Christ, whatever it is that we're doing, if we are orienting ourselves in that way, and we're making our decisions based on wanting to glorify the Lord, that's when we'll, we'll step forward. That's when we're going to make progress. That's when we'll, we'll receive uh, the blessings and the favor of God. When we're doing things and making those choices with our eyes and minds set upon Him. And it says it's not just that big choice our brother talked about of, of, of baptism. That's when it starts. But it, even as Nephi says here, I would ask if all is done. Is all done after that point? It's not. We must continue and be steadfast, pressing forward and trying to endure to the end. And as we do that, um, you know, things become much easier. For us to do when we when we when we make it a, a, a constant daily routine of of trying to to please the Lord, speaking to the Lord, praying for uh, for all of our our needs and the needs of others. When we make that uh, a daily thing, it becomes it becomes part of us, becomes part of our life. If we're just doing it when times are difficult, 
You know, it, it, it comes for a season, and we, we see the benefits of drawing closer to the Lord. But if we don't continue, we see ourselves going the other way. And so we must strive to, to serve the Lord and draw close to Him each and every day. And, uh, you know, so I've, I've, I've worked on this cube. I've been doing it every day now, and I'm getting pretty good at it. And I've timed myself. It takes me eight minutes from the time uh, the kids will mix up the cube and I can solve it now. Now that I, I know what to look for, I know how to orient it and solve it. And yet still sometimes if I get distracted, someone's spot talking to me and asks me a question, I forget which way I turned it. Now I'm like, I'll have to go back. It's going to take, you know, start back over. But if you look on, on, online, there's people that do this, this little cube in, in four seconds. And, and it's not a joke. Because they can look at it and they can um, see the different colors exactly where they are. And, it, and it's not just like, you know, these, these, these brilliant scientists of the world, they're mathematicians. It's, there's children that have studied this and can do it. And they look at the cube, and sometimes, uh, it, you know, it takes several different turns and sequences to get it to where you want it. But uh, it's something that they, they call, it's a, a skill of being able to look ahead. It's called looking ahead. So they see the cube, and they recognize, okay, if I turn it, this is what it's going to look like next, and this is the next. And if they study the cube for a few minutes, they can look ahead and see where every move is that's going to get them where they want to go. And it's incredible. I, I can't even move my hands as fast as they, they do if you watch these videos. I think the world record is under four seconds. And they'll pick up the cube and it's just, and they're done. And it, uh, it's unbelievable. But they have this, this ability to look ahead to be able to solve. I haven't got that with my, my, uh, my skills with the puzzle yet, being able to look that far in advance. And, I'm still taking it one step at a time. But when we're looking at this life and where we're headed, we, ha we have such a gift that's given to us through the Scriptures and the Word of God that we are able to, even in our own lives, look ahead at the promises of God if we make the right decisions in our life. That where we're headed and where we're going, that... If we, if we make these decisions now, we know what the future is going to bring. We know that that eternal life is a gift that God has promised each and every one of us. Now, there's always, there's always things that uh, might get, come up, little surprises here and there, but we know that none of those things are surprises to the Lord. There's nothing that's going to catch the Lord off guard that can happen to you or to me. And our, we simply have to continue to have our faith and trust in the Lord daily. And He will show us, show us through. And um, that, that's um, an incredible uh, gift that we have by simply just giving our lives to Christ, that He will be there. He has promised us that He will abide with us. And that if we would love Him and love our Heavenly Father. Love those all around us. Show them that same compassion and love that He showed towards us. That, that, that hope is, is, it becomes real. It becomes a reality. It's, a, it's, it's something that we know. And uh, I'll finish with this verse. This is in Hebrews uh, 12th verse. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin with jo with which doth so easily beset us, <clears throat> and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Our brother Ken mentioned uh, patience was one of those things that helps us to, to show the love of God. We show that with one another. Well, we have to have that patience each and every day as we... As we Strive to uh, complete this race that's set before us. And he says in the next verse, looking unto Jesus. That's the secret. You know, orienting ourselves in such a way that we follow the one who set the example in every way that it's set. 
in the way that he interacted with people around him, in the way that he served the Lord, in the way that he went into the waters of baptism, and even in the way he prepared himself for his ministry. <clears throat> After he was baptized, it says that he fasted 40 days and 40 nights that the Lord might prepare him for what was in store, for the work that he would have to do. And what does it say in Matthew after he came out from that, that period of fasting? It says that he went forward in the power of, of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit, it was upon him. He had endured that temptation. He was, he was strengthened by being able to overcome the temptation that was sent before him in that time. Just like we are able to, to, to be strengthened and fortified each time that we make the choice not to, to indulge in that temptation. Each time we make the choice to, to do what's right and, and follow the Spirit of God, we are strengthened in it and we move forward in the power of that Spirit. And I pray that we can continue to do that each and every day of our lives. We would look under Christ and that uh, when we finish this race, that he would be pleased. So that's my prayer this morning. May God bless each and every one of you. Well, I enjoyed uh, the words that our brother shared with us. Um, I've been in this branch for a little while, so most of you probably know um, I'm a big fan of movies, especially older movies. And uh, we, um, in, in my household, we watch the same movies over and over. I don't know if it's the same with you. And, and it's like the seasons come. It's like, oh, we've got to watch this one. We've got to watch this one. So we're uh, now officially transitioning to the, the Christmas movies. So uh, I've watched them so many times. My, my mind always goes there. And uh, you're all probably familiar with the, um, the Home Alone movies. And there's, uh, there's this interaction that happens in the second one where um, the, the main character of this kid, he's, he's such an interesting character because he's always doing and saying these bad things about his family. But then he has like these really deep, uh, introspective looking like uh, moments where he's just like he's really reflective. And it's just such a strange contrast. And um, he was looking, he was thinking about the choices he had been making. And he's like, I've made a lot of bad decisions. And this person's trying to counsel him and, and saying how, well, but if you make good decisions, it can, it can cancel out bad decisions. And, and around Christmas tr time, they, they count for double. So this idea that you can cancel out these bad decisions with these good decisions, which um, doesn't apply to every situation. But the amazing thing is, when it comes to Christ, it does work that way. You can make so many wrong decisions, and I know this, because I did it. I made so many bad choices. And, and even to the point of squandering what I had spiritually been given and understanding in the church and walking away from that. But I just needed to make one right choice. And it canceled out all of those bad decisions I had made. Because I chose Jesus Christ. And He said, I will atone for your bad choices. I will redeem your bad choices. Because you're choosing me and I will represent you to the Father. And that is so amazing. So I, I hope that uh, you received a blessing today. Um, we're going to break. Um, we're going to try and come back up here at 1245. So we'll come up just a little bit earlier. I know we don't have as many kids to, to round up today. So about 1245 we'll come up and we're going to um, participate in feet washing. Um, let's sing uh, one song before we, we wrap up our morning uh, service. Let's sing... 102 uh, if you labor in Zion
themselves just bow our heads. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us today, Lord. We thank you for the words that you have spoken. And dear God, we thank you for the spirit that is felt here today, Lord. Dear God, we ask that you can be with all those sick and afflicted that were mentioned. And we ask that you can be with all those in need. That you know who they are and you know their needs, Lord. And we know that we have the faith in you that you can solve all these problems, Lord. So Lord God, we ask that you can be with them now and uh, be with us as we adjourn. And, uh, we keep this presence with us uh, until we meet again this afternoon, Lord. So, dear God, we thank you and we praise your holy name, Lord. And we ask you to put a blessing upon the food that has been prepared downstairs that uh, it will nourish us and strengthen us so we can live our lives to you, Lord. So be with us now. And all this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.